last week, well not last week, week before last, we talked about everything is different, everything is the same. And today we're following that up with manual versus automatic. And I found this picture online. It says the best car security system in America. What, it, what is that? Who knows how to drive stick? Who's driven a stick shift in the last five years? Yeah. Quick funny story how I learned how to drive stick. So um, I learned how to drive a car down at the farm in my dad's uh, Chevy gray uh, station wagon, which is, you know, driving like this, driving a boat down the road. But when I went to college, I, went, I didn't come home for the first fall break. And all my friends up there are from Delaware, Connecticut, New Jersey, Rhode Island. And one of my friends was going back to Delaware. But he wasn't leaving till Friday. And a girl that went to school with us was leaving Thursday. And I was going to spend the night at her house. thought, oh, this is so cool. I'm going to stay at a senior's house in Delaware. <laughs> Georgia boy in Delaware. And she goes, hey, do you, you know, do you mind driving part of the way? I'm like, well, that's, I mean, that's the nice thing to do. Of course I don't mind. And she goes, do you know how to drive sticks? I said, <clears throat> mm-hmm. Of course, yeah, of course I, of course, who doesn't know how to drive stick? So I'm thinking, I knew how to drive a tractor. Um, but you never start out driving a tractor in a driveway, backing up into traffic. You know, you're in a field or in the woods. So I get in the car, and uh, she goes, you okay, right? I was like, yeah, this, this is fine. <laughs> and and the, the driveway didn't have a curb cut. So you know in college, you just hop the curb. Car was parked in the front yard, so I'm trying to back out onto a busy street with parallel cars everywhere. And I made it halfway over the curb, and she looked at me and said, you don't know how to drive stick, do you? I said, I'm fine. I said, if you just get me on the highway, I said, I will be fine. I promise. So I, I made a vow when I got home, and I worked that summer, that I spent a lot of time learning how to drive stick. Self-driving cars. Y'all seen this picture of the Google car, right? It's like as big as my trash can. And this is what people think self-driving cars would be like. You're relaxed, you got a 70-inch screen, prop your feet up, Mary will do your nails. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these are just some images. Y'all have probably seen these. There's all kind of concepts about, oh, you know, what will people do in a self-driving car? Well, what is driving the demand for self-driving cars? What do y'all think is driving the demand for that? Okay. Lazy people. Lazy people, technology, lazy. Save time. Save time. Safety. Yeah. Safety. Can work more. So people can text. You've got more people on the road now. You have some teenagers now that don't even get their driver's license. That they don't want to even drive a car. I have parents. Why do I need to learn how to drive? I mean, but what hasn't changed is we still have the need to get from point A to point B. So, driving is a low performance or low value task. And that's just how we've evolved. People are not valuing that. That's why we're doing so many other things while we're in the car. People are not paying attention. Because what? You're just driving around town. And guess what? It's not hard to figure out where to go anymore either. So you really don't have to pay attention to the traffic signs. Because the Tom Tom or the Garmin or your iPhone is going to tell you when to turn. You know, up ahead and 500 feet is your exit. So we really have kind of stopped paying attention, which is dangerous. But what do you think? Is there a difference between automation and delegation? Is there really a difference? Automation is is what you're, you're getting. Something else is performing a task for you. So you've really delegated that task to, if you've delegated to a person, they're doing it. If you've delegated to a program, if you had a self-driving car, you've automated your driving task by delegating that to Google or Lexus or whoever comes out with the new car. So I want to ask you all some questions. 
is what are some opportunities, let's talk about personal, not talking about business yet, but what are some opportunities you could have to automate or delegate low performance task? What's a low performance task? They just open the house. What, what, what personal first? Oh, personal. You know, like, okay. and I'll start with like housekeeping. housekeeping. What are some business related ones? Okay, open houses. Marketing. But but no, seriously, you, you've got to think about you know these can't be automated, so how do you free up more time so that you can reinvest that in your relationships? Because that's where y'all are the best. You know, y'all are the best at meeting with people face to face. That's why we do all these things. That's why we do lead generation, marketing, to get that opportunity to talk to someone on the phone, to meet with them at a property, to show them, show them a house. And so you gotta start looking at your, you gotta, you gotta start with your personal side and your business life to see how could I pick up some extra free time. And it's not just to do more, it's not to just focus on business relationships, but you know, how do you have time to go to GAR to hang out with fellow Waddell agents and relax? Spend time with friends, family, take time for yourself. You know, it can't happen all the time, but you've got to at least start looking at a few little areas and you gotta always pick the easy ones. Now y'all have listed some, especially personally, that are really easy. Um, one of my favorites we've talked about, cooking. Is there still a value on someone learning how to cook a meal from scratch? Yes. But you know what a lot of these cake mixing companies realized? They created the formula where they had all these cake mixes and pancake mix where all you had to do was add water, right? What they realized is that that was too little for someone to do. So what they do, they took out the processed egg. So now you just add an egg and water. So people still feel like they're doing something because you don't just cook because you need to eat. Usually you're cooking with someone, for someone. And so it's an opportunity to get them involved in the process. And just buying a box of pancakes and dumping water in it at seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday does not impress a five-year-old. They want to crack the egg. They want to dump in some other stuff. And so even some of the big companies realize that they've automated too much of the process, that there still needs to be that personal touch because of the relationship. And that's not something you can automate. You know, we've thought for a long time that Facebook is going to automate our friendship process. And Facebook does a great job at recommending, but they don't say, hey Dana, I recommend you like these posts today because these people should be your friends because I've, I've screened your profile and determined that y'all would be really well if you ever knew each other and met in person. You've still got to, you've still got to screen through that. And we don't want everything automated. And that's kind of where you draw the line is with the relationships. Because if you're relying on your Google car to, you still got to put gas in it, right? You still have to service it. What if you decide you want to take a detour on your way to point B? Google can't read your mind yet, but maybe the Google car will. You still have to be involved in the process to make sure you get the end result you want. And it's that relationship with technology, with services, that'll help you free up more time in your daily life to focus on the things that you really want to do. Because that's where the value is. Not in the time it takes to get everything done, but the time you have to work on those relationships. So, if we can help you with any of these, we're opening a new line of services next week at Waddell. <laughs> we'll be performing all these for a very, very nominal fee. But seriously, th think about some of those. Write, write them down. Um, a lot of them are really easy. And always pick the small ones and just start with one. How could you free up 30 minutes a week? Then look at how could you free up an hour? Then what would you do with that hour? Sleep. You might sleep. Maybe you need that. And think about what you would do and what that would mean to you if you had an extra 30 minutes, an extra hour. 
That might not make a difference immediately today, but I promise you, three months, six months, 12 months from now, you will have added you know, an extra 100 hours to your schedule to do things that you are really interested in doing. So just start with something small and it'll add up, I promise. Appreciate you all making time to be here with us today. I hope you'll have a great morning. Thanks for being here.